talking about uh, tonight is the top five prophetic trends of 2018, what we witnessed in 2018, and what can we as Christians expect for this new year, 2019. So we're going to be talking about that uh, tonight, and so I'm going to ask you to turn to Luke chapter number 21, Luke chapter number 21. Don't forget uh, at the end of the service to visit our book table, sign up for our newsletters. They go out every single week. And so if you don't receive our newsletters, they will go to your inbox through MailChimp. That's who we use. We used to use Constant Contact. Now we use MailChimp to deliver our uh, email newsletters. And so we have one going out tomorrow. And uh, if you want more information about our Bible prophecy trip to Israel, March 24th, April 3rd, then you can see me at the end of the service. I'll give you some information about that. And as the preacher said, pray for Patty and I as we leave Wednesday to head down to the south to do some conferences in Florida, uh, Mississippi, and then up into Canada for a conference before we come back home on February the 27th. We'll be in Luke 21. I want you to look at one verse with me. Verse 28. Luke 21 and verse number 28. Now, of course, this is talking about the coming of the Son of Man. And he says in Luke 21 and verse number 28. This is what the Word of God says. And when these things begin to come to pass, not when they're fulfilled, not 100% fulfillment, when they begin to come to pass, when prophecy is unfolding right before your very eyes, the early fruition of prophecy, and when these things begin to come to pass, what does Jesus tell us to do? Then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you once again that we can be here in the house of God tonight, Lord, at Wood River Baptist Church. Father, thank you so much for the morning services and for allowing me to stand behind this sacred desk, Lord, to teach and to preach the prophetic word of God for its plain sense interpretation. And Father, I pray tonight, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would dictate every word that comes out of my mouth, Lord, to help me to preach in the spirit and not in the flesh, to help me, Heavenly Father, to minister to your people and to preach Bible prophecy responsibly, allowing scripture to interpret scripture. And Lord, if there might be, again, just one person here tonight that doesn't know the Lord Jesus as their personal savior, I pray that Romans 10, 13 will come into effect, that they would call upon the name of the Lord and that they would get saved. Father, we thank you for what you are about to do now tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Jesus said, when you see these things begin to come to pass. You know, we've been in the last days for the last 2,000 years. Jesus' birth initiated the last days. He was born at around 4 B.C. The moment of his birth initiated the last days. We have been in the last days for the past two thousand years. Well, what's the big deal with you prophecy teachers then preaching on the last days if we've been in the last days for the past two thousand years? What's the big deal? Here's the big deal. Is it getting any better? Absolutely not. I know I'm preaching to the choir here. It's not getting any better. It's only going to get worse. And we know that based on 2 Timothy 3.13. Paul said, but evil men and seducers shall wax not better and better. What do they say? Worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse number 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Ladies and gentlemen, it is intensifying right before our very eyes. We are seeing the early fruition of Bible prophecy unfolding right before our very eyes. I'm going to look at five trends briefly tonight. Five trends that we saw in 2018. And what should we expect in the new calendar year of 2019? I believe that we will see an exponential increase of prophetic events unfolding before our very eyes, indicating that the next main event on God's calendar of events 
is indeed the rapture of the church of the living God. That is the next main event. But let me clarify something here uh, tonight. The rapture does not begin the tribulation period. When the church is taken out of here, then immediately the tribulation is going to begin. That's not the case. There's got to be some sort of a gap of time between the rapture and the, the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy, or what we would call that seven-year period of tribulation. You know, there are some guys on TV right now that actually believe, Brother John, that we're in the tribulation right now. Some of these guys, like, well, yeah, I'm going to mention my name. Irvin Baxter Jr. is one of them who teaches that we are right now experiencing the trumpet judgments. Can you imagine that, Brother Bob? That we are right now experiencing the trumpet judgments. Others believe that we are right now under the vial or the bowl judgments of Revelation chapters 15 and 16. Others, the trumpet judgments of Revelation chapters 8 and 9. And there are a few that believe that we are right now experiencing the seal judgments of Revelation chapter number 6. That is absolute hogwash. Amen? Amen. Or I have a better theological term for that. <laughs> Amen. That's a good theological term for a false doctrine like that. We are not in the tribulation period. And as a born again believer, you will never experience that seven year period of tribulation. Simply because the promise that Jesus Christ gave you and I in Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from. Keep us from what? The hour of temptation. That's the tribulation period. To come upon all the world, not the church, all the world to try. Not us, the church, but to try who? Them. Right. Them. Who's them? Unbelieving Israel. The unbelieving Gentile nations of the world. To try them who dwell on the earth. Or the earth dwellers, if you will. We must remember, I made, I made this clear this morning, that there are no prophecies that must be fulfilled before the rapture of the church takes place. There are no signs that precede the rapture of the church. We, we talked about that word briefly, imminency or imminent this morning. Imminency simply means something hanging over your head and ready to overtake you at any moment. Nothing has to be fulfilled. No signs precede the rapture. The rapture is an imminent event. So we will uh, briefly look at the, the top five prophetic trends of 2018 that signify that the coming of the Lord Jesus is indeed drawing nigh. Amen. So, of course, we see these major players on the world stage today. You know, you look at the map of the Middle East. You look at these major players that are on the world stage Uh Today, uh, for example, I'll just you know, throw a few of them out there to you. Uh, Libya will be a major player on the world stage according to Bible prophecy. Libya in Genesis 10.6 was known as biblical put. Some spell it P-H-U-T or P-U-T. Put is modern day Libya. Of course, Libya will attack uh, Israel in Gen uh, excuse me, Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse Number five, Egypt will play a major role in Bible prophecy. Daniel 11.40, as the king of the south, that will join the king of the north, and that will be Syria. And you notice Israel, see that little pink uh, chicken scratch right there? Well, that's the state of Israel, no bigger than the state of New Jersey. You can barely see it on the map, amen? Well, Israel is sandwiched between the king of the north, Syria, and the king of the south, Egypt. That's Daniel chapter 11 and verse number 40. Those two Arab countries will attack Israel. Israel just had an airstrike against Syria of Iranian bases uh, there uh, in Syria. Speaking about Iran, Iran is uh, uh, Persia in Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse number 5. They will attack Israel uh, from the east. Of course, here you see that big yellow strand there. Well, that is Russia. They are Magog, Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse number 2. Russia is the sugar daddy of the entire Arab Middle East. Of course, joining Russia would be uh, uh, Ezekiel 38, 2. Meshach, Tubal, Ezekiel 38, 6. Gomer, Togarmer. Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, Togarmer is today the Islamic State of Turkey. Magog settled north of the Caspian and Black Seas. That was, that's where Russia is. 
Meshach, Tubal, Gomer to Gomer, settled south of the Caspian and Black Sea. That is where Turkey is today. When we were in Istanbul, we saw a replica at the airport of an ancient Turkish map. And Brother John, I saw right on the replica of that ancient Turkish map, Turkey in biblical times consisted of Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, and then Gomer had a son named Togarma. Now, they're recorded in Genesis chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. Magog was the son of Japheth, and of course, Meshach, Tubal, Gomer was also the sons of Japheth. And so Magog makes up what is Russia today. Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, Togarma make up what is uh, Turkey today. Then, of course, Saudi Arabia, Psalm 83, verse 6, will join in an attack on Israel. So look at folks, we're looking at major players in light of biblical prophecy. But even in this area right here, let's get out of the Middle East and go right over here to what is Europe. And we see that one day Europe will play a major role in Bible prophecy, the revived Roman Empire. So we'll talk about that briefly in just a few moments. So we see major players on the stage right now that are neck deep in the geopolitical activities of the Middle East. Why do I cover the political? We cover the political because the political is set in the stage for the prophetic to be fulfilled. That's why we cover the geopolitical activities. I have a red book out there called um, Bible Eschatology, looking at geopolitical events in light of biblical prophecy. I look at a current uh, situation going on in Israel, the Middle East, and around the world, and then in that book I give you a prophetic perspective from a plain sense interpretation of Bible prophecy. So if you haven't gotten a copy of that book, get it before you leave the church tonight. So we're going to look at these major players, Brother John, and what they are doing right now, and what their role will be in the not-too-distant future, and these nations will have a major uh, eschatological ramification in relation to that little piece of land right there that you can just barely see on the map, no bigger than the state of New Jersey. We are talking about the Jewish state of Israel. So let's look at the first one right here that we call Gog and the Magog Alliance, the unholy Gog Magog Alliance. That, by the way, the Jewish prophet Ezekiel prophesied some 2,500 years ago. That Israel, which is, you just barely see it right over here, you can see all the nations coming from their perspective locations, and they will attack the Jewish state of Israel. Again, as I said, Gog, uh, Magog would be modern day Russia. Gog, G O G, is a person. Gog is a personality. God comes from the land of Magog. I can't prove it from the Bible. I can't prove it from Scripture. But I wouldn't be surprised if Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, fits the bill for that individual the Bible calls Gog. Given his behavior in the world today. And he even threatened the Jewish state of Israel that if you attack Syria again, we will fire missiles from Syria into central Israel. That's a direct threat against the Jewish state of Israel. Russia is neck deep over there in that six-year Syrian civil war that has resulted in over 750,000 innocent Syrian men, women, and children dead. Just to keep one man in power, President Bashar al-Assad of Syria. Russia is over there in Syria. Turkey is over there in Syria. Iran is over there in Syria. Major players, ladies and gentlemen, in light of biblical prophecy. And the Jewish prophet Ezekiel, writing some 2,500 years ago, saw an attack on Israel coming where? From the far north. Russia is far north of the state of Israel, just above the Caspian and Black Sea. As I said already, Mish look at right here, you can see it on the Turkish side. Uh, Meshach. Tubal, Gomer, Togamra. All you got to do is read Genesis chapter 10, verses 1 through 3, and see where these guys came from. As I said already, they were the sons of Japheth, the son of Noah. Gomer had a son. His name is Togamra. These guys settled in those, in those four locations right there in the Islamic state of Turkey. And by the way, Turkey has a radical Islamic president that wants to see an Islamic global caliphate in the world. I'm talking about Tayyip Erdogan. 
who says that, listen, the Muslim world has to rise up and they must take Jerusalem. That's what he said. Right out of his own ungodly mouth, we as Muslims must band together and we must take Jerusalem from the Jews. That is exactly what the Jewish prophet Ezekiel talks about in chapters 38 and 39. That is exactly what the Jewish prophet Daniel talked about in Daniel chapter 11, 40 through 45. And those major players are over there, ladies and gentlemen, as I speak. Russia is almost on the border of the state of Israel. So we see the early fruition of this prophecy slowly unfolding right before our very eyes. Now that, of course, President Donald Trump is pulling, pulling our troops out of Syria, once our U.S. forces pull out, I guarantee you the wolves are going to come in. The wolves are going to come in and the wolves are going to eat the scraps that are over there right now. And you're looking at three dangerous men that are on the screen right now. Let me refer to them by their biblical names. Persia, Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse number 5 in 1936 changed their name to Iran. This is Iran's president, Hassan Rouhani, who says Israel needs to be wiped off the face of the map. And of course, you know the guy who is in the middle. He is the president of ancient Magog, modern day Russia today. As I said, I can't prove it, but I wouldn't be surprised if this guy fits the bill of God in Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse number two. The president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. And of course, the guy on the right, Meshach Tubal Gomer Togomer, the Islamic State of Turkey. Their president, Tayyip Erdogan, said that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is nothing but a savage murderer, and we need to take Jerusalem. Now, in order to take Jerusalem, what land do you have to go to? Israel. Yeah. Exactly. You must go to the land of Israel in order to do that. So it seems to me that Ezekiel's prophecy is spot on. Amen? Daniel's prophecy is spot on. And when you look at the map of all those Arab nations in the entire Middle East, Psalm 83 tells us there will be a confederacy of Arab nations that will attack the Jewish state of Israel. What's the goal? To annihilate the Jews from the face of the earth. But I think that there is a God in heaven who neither slumbers nor sleeps. And God said, I will protect my people. I will defend my people. I will protect the apple of my eye, my chosen people, the Jewish people. And that's exactly what God is going to do. This God, may God, unholy alliance will one day be defeated. Uh, that uh, uh, Daniel's unholy alliance will one day be defeated. That Psalm 83 Arab Confederacy unholy alliance will one day be defeated. That was a trend that we see happening, we saw happening in 2018, and it's going to get even more intense in 2019, especially when uh, Trump is going to pull our forces out of Syria. Of course, I, I took this from the Debka website. Again, you know, I take it from the horse's mouth. I take it from the secular uh, website. Russia and Syria threatened to fire SA-5 missiles into central Israel if the Israeli Air Force, or IAF, uh, continues their airstrikes. That is a direct threat by Russia upon the Jewish state of Israel. And folks, just yesterday, Israel once again struck Iranian missile bases in Syria. Something tells me, Brother John, that's all going to come to a head down the road. Ezekiel's prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Daniel chapter 11 and verse number 40 is unfolding right before our very eyes. So trend number one is the Gog-Magog unholy alliance. Trend number two is, and I'm reading about this all the time. I may have talked about this the last time that I was even here. AI or artificial 
intelligence. That was another major trend of 2018 is the continued rise of AI or artificial intelligence. The Russia, again, Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, said whoever controls AI will one day rule the world. This is what he said out of his own mouth. Artificial intelligence is the future, not only for Russia, but for all humankind. Putin said whoever becomes the leader in this sphere will become the ruler of the world. That's exactly what he said in the CNBC file right here. Even though he said this in 2017, we see the rise of AI or artificial intelligence in 2018, and it's going to get even more intense in 2019. Uh, Putin, leader in artificial intelligence, will rule the world. And folks, when he made that statement, I was reminded of Revelation chapter number 13 and verse number 1. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horn ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. That beast goes by 27 different names in the Bible. Uh, he's known as the worthless shepherd in Zechariah 11:17. He's known as the prince that shall come, Daniel 9, 26. He's known as the little horn, Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. The beast, Revelation 13, 1. Or you better know him in 1 John 2, 18 as the Antichrist. The ruler of the revived Roman Empire. And again, even though Vladimir Putin made that statement in 2017, we continue to see the rise of AI increasing. As a matter of fact, China is at the leading head of all this AI technology. They are at the forefront of artificial intelligence that will one day have future ramifications. They have an AI system called Dragonfly. Now, this artificial intelligence Dragonfly. Uh, that they have there can analyze billions of photographs and locate missing people within seconds. It is so powerful that it can even recognize people wearing disguises. It can recognize people in 30-year-old photos. Nobody will be able to escape this type of technology. As a matter of fact, China is using that dragonfly in uh, China right now. And by the way, guess who's looking to buy this type of technology from China. Well, surprise, surprise, Facebook. Apple. Google. Now, I don't know if it's me, but when I, my wife and I are sitting in TGI, if it happens to me, everywhere I go, I'm sitting in TGIF with my wife, my beautiful wife, and we're having a meal together. So my phone would vibrate. So I'm thinking I'm getting a text or, or something. I'm getting a text from Facebook asking me, how's my meal at TGIF? How do they know I'm eating at TGIF? I could be walk, walking in a shopping mall. Say it's the Warwick Mall. And my phone will once again ring and it's Facebook saying, can you give us your feedback concerning the Warwick Mall? No matter if you have a Facebook account, no matter where you are, they'll notify you and say, what do you think about that place? What do you think about that restaurant? What do you think about that seafood? Okay, we were in Louisiana last year, and I go to my, my favorite seafood place in Bush, Louisiana called House of Seafood, where they have a massive pile of, of, of crab legs, and I love my crab legs, amen? I'd be sitting there and I'd get another notification from Facebook saying, can you rate the house of seafood in Bush, Louisiana? You can already see this AI, artificial intelligence thing being played out by Facebook, by Google, by Apple. These guys monitor everywhere you go. Again, that reminds me of Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 15. Why don't you turn there with me to Revelation 13 and verse number 15. This is where I believe it's all going to come to a head right here. Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 15. Now, at the midway point of the tribulation period, the Antichrist will make a similar facsimile of himself. He's going to make a statue, a, rep a representation of himself. 
And when that statue was up on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, maybe inside the most holy place, in a rebuilt third Jewish temple, when that statue was up, he's going to look at that statue and go, that statue will come to life. And what is that statue going to do? Well, look at Revelation 13 and verse number 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. A statue coming to life? Are you kidding me? Not only does that statue come to life, it will speak blasphemies against our God. It will speak blasphemies against our Savior. Do you want to know how much of a blasphemous world that we live in today? I just put on my Twitter account. You can go to my Twitter account, August Rosado at Bible underscore prophecy. I put all the late breaking news stories on my Twitter account. There was a riot in Haifa, Israel among Arab Christians and the Israeli police. And it turned violent, brother. Why? It was a museum in Haifa that had a crucifix with Ronald McDonald on it. Ronald McDonald, McDonald's, cheeseburgers, Happy Meals, Ronald McDonald, crucified on a cross. The Arab Christians out there went livid and started to riot and it got violent with the Israeli police. That's how much of a blasphemous society that we live in today. When they blaspheme the name of our God every single day, but it will come to a head. In the tribulation period, when the Antichrist goes into that rebuilt third Jewish temple in Jerusalem, on the Temple Mount, sets up a statue of himself, a likeness of himself. Gives life to it, the Bible says. That statue comes to life. And it's speaking blasphemies against God, against the Son of God, against the Holy Spirit of God, against the people of God. I've been to the Hall of Presidents in Disney World. I took my wife to the Hall of Presidents there. And when you're sitting down in the Hall of Presidents and that curtain opens up, well, there's Abraham Lincoln walking out on the stage. Now, that was my first time going there, and I thought this was an actor. I mean, if that guy looked like Abraham Lincoln. I'm like, wow, this dude's a pretty good actor. Then here comes George Washington. Here comes Ronald Reagan. Here comes Obama. All these presidents are coming. I'm like, wow, these guys are good. They're really good actors. And the lady behind me said, sir, they're not actors. I'm like, what are you talking about? They're not actors, they're robots. I'm like, come again? They're robots. AI, artificial intelligence, these things communicated with you. They talked with you. They communicated with the audience. I mean, how can we come up with that type of crazy technology? Folks, it's here. And it will come to a head in the tribulation period when Antichrist gives life unto the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Number three, another one would be, of course, that's a replica, replica of the uh, Antichrist's image of himself, and he causes it to come to life, and it will speak blasphemies. But number three, another one is that in Sweden, Sweden, thousands of Swedes are taking a chip in their skin. So again, I got this from the, uh, uh, the technology website. Thousands of Swedes are inserting microchips under their skin. Now look at what this guy's holding right here. That thing's no bigger than a grain of rice, man. That will hold all of your financial, all of your medical information, the development of chip implants. Some companies are requiring their employees to receive a chip implant under their skin as a condition of employment. And you can see over here in Sweden, that is exactly what they're doing. They're taking chip implants under the skin. And these microchips can access their homes. These microchips can access their finance, their health, medical. All their personal information is right in that little grain Right there, no bigger than a grain of rice, holding all of your information. And they're, they're inserting it just above your thumb right here. 
So if, say, for example, if you get into a car accident, you're not responsive. How, you know, say you've got no information on you, no ID. Well, all they do is take a little scanner and beep. All of that's going to come up on the screen. You know, everything today has a barcode. There's a barcode on everything, man. No matter what you buy, there is a barcode on everything. And when you get all of your products, you take your products to the cashier. She takes that scanning gun and she aims it right at that barcode. And then when it's all tallied up, well, that would be $57.80. You pay with either cash or with a credit card. But right now, we're heading toward a cashless society. Even right now, people don't like using cash. Everybody loves using the plastic. Whether it's debit or whether it's credit, everybody loves using plastic. Even on debit cards and credit cards, you have that chip on there. So instead of swiping, all you got to do is what? Insert it into the reader. That's where we're going to right now. But can you imagine during the tribulation period, you get all of your items together? That would be $87.50. Here's a scanning gun. Beep. Oh, here you go. Beep. Folks, that's going to be the fulfillment of Revelation 13, 16 through 18. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the image of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understand and count the number of the beast. For it is the number of man, and his number is 603 score 6 or 666. Six. If God wanted that prophecy fulfilled tomorrow, it's right there. There's the technology, folks. The technology is there to fulfill that prophecy. All these Swedes over here are taking the implant, and there's a fulfillment right there. Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 18. When you look at that word mark right over there in Revelation 13, it is the Greek word karagma. And karagma can refer to a Brandon, a stamp, or even a tattoo. Wasn't tattoos illegal in Rhode Island at one time? You couldn't take tattoos in Rhode Island, in Massachusetts for that matter. But I believe now that they've made tattoos legal, you have tattoo parlors opening up on every corner. I think even at the Dunk Center uh, a few years back, they had a tattoo convention. You see people today that are walking around like human coloring books, man. Tattoos are so popular in violation of Leviticus 19.28, but tattoos are so popular. So I'm not sure exactly what type of brand that is going to be, but whatever the case is, people are going to say, listen, I need to work. I need to eat. I need to support my family. Put it right there. Put it right there. I am willing to be identified with this ruler of the revived Roman Empire, whom 1 John 2.18 says, little children, it is the last time or the last days. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, future tense, even now there are many Antichrists, whereby you know it is the last time or the last days. And folks, this is exactly what we see. Trend number four. I said there's going to be five of them. Trend number four would be the ruler of the revived Roman Empire. That revived Roman Empire is described in uh, uh, Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7, Revelation chapter 12, Revelation chapter 13, and Revelation chapter 17 for the future revived Roman Empire. And out of that future revived Roman Empire will arise, ready? How many fingers do I have? A ten-nation revived Roman Empire. Daniel describes them way before John the Apostle was even born. 500 years before John was even born. Daniel describes ten horns. That's Revelation chapter 7, verses 7, 20, and 24. Ten horns, ten horns, ten horns. A ten-nation confederacy. 500 years later, after Daniel's dead and long off the scene, John the Apostle, as a prisoner of the Roman Empire on the Isle of Patmos, he's talking about 
10 horns. Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, Revelation chapter 17, verses 3, 7, 12, 16. 10 horns, 10 horns, 10 horns, 10 horns. A 10 nation confederacy. You know, when I preach at churches in the South like I'm about to do, I say, you know, guys, one day the confederacy is going to rise again. We are glory to God, Arkansas! Whoa, slow your roll down. I'm not talking about a confederacy in the South of the United States of America. I'm talking about a confederacy from the East. A ten nation European Union Confederacy. Keep your eyes, folks, on the European Union. Because I believe the European Union is the embryo, the infrastructure for the future revived Roman Empire. The EU was formed in 1951 with only six member states. Fast forward to 2019, the European Union has mushroomed into a 28-member state bloc. Any country that joins the European Union must give up their currency to the EU, must give up their army to the EU, and whenever the EU says jump, that country has to say, how high? The European Union will be a force to be reckoned with in the not too distant future. Again, Daniel foretold of this revived Roman Empire. John in the book of Revelation foretold of this revived Roman Empire that will one day produce the Antichrist. Again, I believe the EU is the embryo or the infrastructure for the revived Roman Empire. And Daniel and John talks about Ten horns. So once again, I decided to go to the European Union website. Not a prophecy website. They're not religious people. They're secular, godless humanists. That's who they are, Brother John, in the European Union. So I decided to go to the Vol Europe, which is the official website for the European Union. And there was a number that they used that caught my eye. What number are you looking at on the screen? Yeah. dink? I don't think so. Look at what they're saying. Ten countries for what they are calling for the United States of Europe. Can you imagine that? They want to take those 28 member states and divide those 28 member countries into 10 divisions or 10 regions. The date on that was June 20th, 2012. That wasn't that long ago. They want to divide all 28 member states into 10 regions or 10 divisions. And yet again, Daniel 7, 7, 8, 20, 24, 10 horns, 10 horns, 10 horns. Revelation 12, 3, 13, 1, chapter 17, 3, 7, 12, 16, 10 horns, 10 horns, 10 horns, 10 horns, 10 horns, 10 horns. a 10 nation European Union Confederacy, and that's exactly what they're calling for here. Even the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, says we need to put together a global European army, calling it a coalition of the willing. But yet in the paragraph right here, it says, impatient with German foot dragon on defense, French President Emmanuel Macron will bring together a 10 nation, a 10 nation, a 10 nation coalition of the willing next month designed to prepare European armed forces to take action together in emergencies and to bind Britain into military cooperation as it leads the European Union. You all heard of Brexit, right? Everyone's heard of Brexit. Britain is looking to leave the European Union. Now, their Prime Minister, Theresa May, said, listen, guys, this was a bad, bad idea. We simply cannot leave the European Union. We need to have another referendum. We need to have another vote on this to stay within the European Union. Don't think we can live without the EU. We need to stay within the European Union. So Daniel is talking about these ten horns, and yet all I ever hear about right now is a global European Union armed force. Doesn't it make you wonder who's going to take over that armed force in the not-too-distant future? Revelation 17, 14, These shall make war with the Lamb, but the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him, that's you, by the way, and they that are with him are called and chosen 
and faithful. Do you remember the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had in Daniel chapter 2? He sees the head of gold, the Babylonian Empire, breast and arms of silver, the Medo-Persian Empire, belly and thighs of brass, the Grecian Empire, legs of iron, the Roman Empire. But then the Roman Empire would fizzle out of existence as an empire around 476 A.D. until Daniel got to, how many toes do you have? <laughs> he calls them, brother, ten toes. Those ten toes are a future revived Roman Empire. Fifty years later, after Nebuchadnezzar had that dream, Daniel has a vision of these beasts in Daniel chapter 7. What does he see? He sees a lion. He sees a bear. Oh, my. Come on. Any Wizard of Oz fans here? He sees a lion. <laughs> he sees a bear. No tiger, though. <laughs> he sees a lion. He sees a bear. He sees a leopard. But then he saw an unidentified beast. We don't know what it is. The Bible doesn't tell us. It's a kangaroo, a hippopotamus, a giraffe. It just says an unidentified beast. Who's the lion? The Babylonian Empire. Who's the bear? Not the Russians. The bear is a Medo-Persian empire. It's a lopsided bear, like it's ready to tip over with three ribs in the mouth of that bear. And the reason why that, I love how the word of God uses such, uh, 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 how can I put it, there's a certain word I'm looking for, uses such imagery. That lopsided bear with three ribs in its mouth. Mind you, the Medes and the Persians function as one unit, as one, one army, but the Persians were over the Medes. And so the bear is tipping in favor of the Persian Empire. The three ribs in the mouth of the bear would be the nations of Egypt, Assyria, and then, of course, Babylon that was conquered by the Persians in 539 B.C. The Persian king Cyrus allowed the Jews to leave Babylon to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. Here's what's interesting. Interesting. The Israeli government today just issued... You can buy these, by the way, even online. They just issued silver shekel coins that have the image of Donald Trump on there and King Cyrus. Can you imagine that, brother? Because Cyrus was a friend to the Jews, the ancient Persians. Now, their modern-day descendants hate the Jews, which are the Iranians. <laughs> By the way, the Iranians still speak the Persian language. They don't speak Arabic in Iran. They speak the Persian language that they call today Farsi. But Cyrus was a friend to the Jews, and he allowed them to go back to Jerusalem to build a temple. Then December 6, 2017, President Donald Trump recognized Jerusalem as the capital of the Jewish state of Israel. It was 3,000 years coming. Amen? So when Daniel got to that unidentified beast, actually the leopard would be the Grecian Empire, but when we got to that unidentified beast, that would be the revived Roman Empire. Out of that revived Roman Empire will arise ten final nations. And how interesting it is that France's president is looking to put together a, there it is right there, ten nation coalition of the willing. The European Union wants to have 10 countries for a United States of Europe. Finally, trend number five. Oh, by the way, look at, the, look at this right here. That's in front of the EU headquarters in Brussels, Belgium. Do you remember Revelation chapter 17, verse number three? I saw a woman sit on a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. John in Revelation saw a woman sit on a scarlet-colored beast. And my, oh my, where did they get the idea in the European Union to come up with that? Did they read the book of Revelation? Are they experts in Bible prophecy? I don't think so, Brother John. These guys are fulfilling Bible prophecy and don't even know it. You're looking at a statue in front of the EU headquarters of a woman sitting on some type of a beast. And that's exactly what we read, folks, in Revelation chapter 17 and verse number 3. The final one, of course, would be what we are living in right now, perilous times. Trend number 5, we see perilous times. Paul brought that up in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. 
And when you read verses 1 through 5 of 2 Timothy chapter 3, you will count. Count it yourself when you read it. You will count 19 characteristics of the last days. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, what are we to do? Turn away. Don't let a cancer destroy your church with one troublemaker coming in here and undermining the man of God. I've seen it happen time and time again with one guy with a, a nasty theology will come in, undermine every single word that man of God preaches behind this sacred desk to try to poison your mind against him. And then before you know it, there goes the neighborhood. Split right down the line. The Bible says, from such, turn away. This is the reason why, folks, we need to be in this book every single day. I, I don't know if I've used that filthy, dirty word here last time, brother. Maybe I didn't. Are there any little kids here? Dears, you might want to block their ears, okay? Because I'm going to use a very dirty word. Yeah, or even her ears, yeah. Block mom's ears. Ready? Here we go. I'm going to use a very dirty word. You might not see me back here again. Ready? Here it is. Study! Yeah, don't, 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 throw, don't throw nothing at me. That's a filthy word in Christianity today. And that's the reason why the cults are turning us into theological pretzels. You know why? We're not in the word of God anymore. 2 Timothy 2.15 says what? Paul used that dirty word. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And Christians today don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth because we're not reading God's word anymore. Oh, we might read Joel Osteen's book or we might read T.D. Jakes' stuff. No wonder we're getting so messed up. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. But you've got to be in the book, folks. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. Good doctrine. For correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God or the woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We need to read God's word Every single day. Why? We're living in perilous times. And Paul gives us those 19 characteristics of the last days in which we live. Mass shootings all across the United States of America. The acceptance of sodomy. Same-sex lifestyles that they're trying to cram down our throat. And if we don't accept it, then we're nothing but a bunch of bigots. And we're nothing but a bunch of haters. Listen, if God said that lifestyle is wrong, I'm not going to go with the government. I'm going with my God. Amen? I'm going with the word of God, and I am going with God. I don't care what the government says. I don't care what the politicians say. If God said it's sin, it's sin. Amen. It is not a natural lifestyle. We see this not only domestically here in the United States, but folks on a global scale. And it's not going to get any better. 2 Timothy 3.13 says it's going to get worse. So in closing... What should we expect in the year 2019? As, you know, 2018 came to an end, we were still hoping for the Lord's return. In 2018, he decided to tarry. So in 2019, we will continue to wait for his soon return. But these five trends that we looked at will continue to increase and they'll get worse and worse. So again, look out for Russia, Turkey, and Iran's unholy alliance against Israel. The Gog Magog unholy alliance. Ezekiel 38, 39. Daniel 11, 40 through 45. Psalm 83. The European Union is looking to form a global army to be the sole voice for all the nations of the world. Calling for 10 countries for a United States of Europe. The Ten Nation Coalition of the Will, and as France's President Emmanuel Macron is calling for, a global European Union army, the revived Roman Empire, 
prophesied in Daniel 2, Daniel 7, Revelation chapters 12, 13, 17. Ten horns are going to come out of that revived Roman Empire. Daniel 7, 7, 20, 24, Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, Revelation 17, 3, 7, 12, 16. Ten, ten horns, ten horns, ten horns, ten horns. The revived Roman Empire is alive and well today. Artificial intelligence will increase and will be able to identify everyone on a global scale. Let me tell you something. Privacy, your privacy, is the thing of the past. You don't have privacy anymore. You ever notice if you get a new phone system in your house, new phone number? Hey, my phone, my phone number, bring there's a telemarketer with your phone number. Even if it's private, they know exactly where you are. Artificial intelligence, Revelation 13, 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak as cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. AI, artificial intelligence. The moral disintegration of society will continue to sink to an all-time low with the love of many waxing cold. The five prophetic trends of 2018 will continue to exponentially increase in the new year of 2019. What did Jesus say in Luke 21, 28? And when you see these things fulfilled, no. He said, when you see these things begin, begin, unfold, early fruition, when you see these things begin to come to pass, look up, Lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. I want you to write down these four trends, not the ones I just mentioned, but these four other trends that are showing us that the rapture of the church is so very close at hand. Trend number one, write down this Hebrew word, Aliyah, A-L-I-Y-A. Aliyah is a Hebrew term that means to ascend or to go up to the city of Jerusalem. They did that in biblical times for Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles, according to Deuteronomy 16, 16. Today, the Israeli government uses Aliyah for Jewish immigration from all over the world back to the land of Israel. Jews have been making Aliyah to Israel since 1897, leading up to the creation of the state of Israel, May the 14th of 1948. Jews are making Aliyah back to the land. Of Israel. That's Ezekiel 37, the fulfillment of the dry bones. And then we see trend number two anticipation for peace. All the peace treaties that Israel has signed, none of them are working. The Camp David Accords of 1979, not working, even though Israel has a peace treaty with Egypt, never been normalized. The Oslo Accords between Israel and the Palestinians, 1994, dead in the water. Dead in the water. And then the 1994 peace treaty between Israel and Jordan. Israel has a peace treaty with a second Arab country, Jordan. Never been normalized. Somebody's got to come on the scene. Take a worthless piece of paper and according to Daniel 9.27, confirm it. That's Daniel 9.27. Confirm is a Hebrew word, get a bar, meaning he gives it teeth. He makes it work. He gives it a foundation. And when that Peace treaty is confirmed between the Antichrist and the Jewish people. They'll go and rebuild their third Jewish temple. And they told me at the Temple Institute, we can have that temple up and running within one year. So we have Aliyah of the Jews back to Israel. Anticipation of peace, Daniel 9, 27. Then trend number three, alignment of the nations. The alignment of the nations. A Russian-led Arab attack against the Jewish people. I already told you that, Ezekiel 38, 39. Daniel 11, 40 through 45. Psalm 83. And the final and fourth one, the arrangements for the rebuilding of a third Jewish temple. You gotta come to Israel with us. Let me take you this march to the Holy Land. Let me take you to the Temple Institute in Jerusalem, where they're making all the preparations for the rebuilding of that third Jewish temple. Prophesied in Daniel 9, 27, Matthew 24, 15, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, Revelation 11, 1 and 2. The, the, the um, 
arrangements for the rebuilding of a third Jewish temple. All these trends will exponentially increase in 2019 at an unprecedented rate. Until then, let's be soul winners in these last days. Let's pray the prayer that Paul prayed in 1 Corinthians 16, 22. If any man love not our Lord Jesus, let him be anathema. Let him be cursed. And then he uses the beautiful Aramaic expression, Maranatha. Maranatha is a beautiful Aramaic expression that simply means our Lord come. How appropriate is it to close out the canon of scripture in Revelation 22, 21. He which testifies of these things saith, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. Wow. Talk about ending the word of God on a positive note. Amen. Amen. After all of this plagues and death in the book of Revelation, it ends on a positive note. And that is the next main event on God's calendar of events. We call it the blessed hope of Titus 2.13 or the rapture of the church. Again, no signs preceded and no prophecies have to be fulfilled. The rapture is imminent. It could happen at any moment, at any time. So we don't look for signs, but we are listening for that sound. <laughs> moment in the twinkling of an eye we're out of here amen we're going to meet the lord jesus in the air he's going to take us to the father's house remember we talked about death deliverance and departure this morning the dead go first six feet further but they rise out of that grave first and we who are alive and remain caught up harparzo raptoro in latin Caught up to meet the Lord Jesus in the air. Amen. And he will take us to the Father's house. That could even be tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your precious word. Lord, looking at these five top prophetic trends of 2018. How they are unfolding and they continue, Lord, to unfold. is showing. That the words of Jesus are coming to pass right before our very eyes. That when you see these things begin to come to pass, not fulfilled, begin to come to pass. We are told to look up, to lift up our heads, because our redemption is drawing nigh. Lord, you did not come in 2018 and there was a reason for that. As a matter of fact, I believe 2 Peter 3.9 gives us the reason for that. The Lord is not slack concerning this promise, as some men count slackness. But his long-suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Lord, you want to see as many souls saved as possible before you decide to call your bride out of this world at the rapture. Because anybody left behind at the rapture will go through an unprecedented time of death, sorrow, pain, suffering that will just, just be extremely terrible. That we would want our worst enemy to be left behind at the rapture. Which means they need to get saved in the here and now. To be born again. To trust in the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. To call upon his name, asking him to come into their lives to be their Lord and personal Savior. <clears throat> and Lord, if there is someone here tonight, I pray that they would give Pastor John and myself that opportunity. Or maybe even those watching live, Lord. To have that opportunity to talk with us. So that we can show them from the Bible how they can know for sure without a shadow of a doubt that one day, heaven will be their destination. So, Father, take this invitation now and be glorified in everything that is said and done here. For it's in Jesus' sweet and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother John. Amen.